folks, Rich here at RCInformer.com. Thanks for checking out this video on the Durafly Sea Vixen. This is uh, one of Hobby King's uh, newest airplanes in the uh, Durafly lineup. And uh, it's a pretty neat airplane. I, uh, I bought the airplane because uh, it's, uh, it, it was just such a unique looking airplane and Hobby King put out a really stellar flying video of the airplane that, uh, that was uh, very high quality, real nice video. And after seeing it, uh, I was just real impressed with, with the airplane, and i got to tell you, I, honestly, I've never even heard of a Sea Vixen before, or even seen one until I saw that video. So the airplane was, was sort of new to me. I had just uh, really never even heard of it. But uh, uh, the de Havilland Sea Vixen is just a really cool looking airplane. And the biggest standout feature is really just the uniqueness of it and the way it looks. Uh, this model in particular has uh, a lot of nice details, like the uh, little... Uh, little wing stall fences and the pitot tubes and the refueling probes and uh, the, the decals detail that uh, really accurately represents um, uh, the, the real airplane and I believe there's only one that's uh, flying in existence and it's painted up just like this and online you can go up and see lots and lots and lots of pictures of it. Um, uh, I'm real impressed overall with how this thing went together. There were only six glue joints to put together. You know both the wings um, uh, glued on then these booms glued on, and then you glued the uh, elevator um, uh, right between the two uh, 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 vertical stabilizers. Uh, I used epoxy and scuffed all the surfaces, and you'll see that in the build guide, uh, how, how I actually went about doing that. Uh, but it's a real easy build, and it's a nice flying airplane. Uh, it's very smooth. Uh, it rotates nice and smooth. It comes in and lands nice and smooth at just sort of a moderate speed. Um, this plane is really meant for... I'd say a, a really a, sort of an intermediate flyer that likes a scale airplane that flies very scale and really looks very different. It will do nice big round loops um, uh, such as uh, you know cubinate maneuvers and so forth. Uh, it rolls very nicely and uh, inverted flight as you saw from the video it does handle quite nicely. That's probably about the limit of the, the maneuvers of this airplane. Um, but uh, I found that it did everything very well and then again if you like a nice graceful smooth scale flyer uh, that's very unique looking uh, this one fits the bill and I'm real happy with it now one buying tip that I'm going to give you as well that worked out nice for me and maybe you can use it as well the plane sold for about hundred hundred fifty five dollars something like that I think and uh, after you check out in your Hobby King cart if you look at your, your invoice, you might see on the right side, like I saw, a little symbol, a little blue symbol uh, with little people next to it. That's actually, if you click on it, it's a buddy code. You can take that code, put it on, a, on, a, on RC Groups, or you can put it on RC Universe, or really any discussion thread. And if somebody clicks on that, they get $20 off, and you get a $20 credit. So I was able to do that as soon as I posted it on RC Groups uh, on one of the... Uh, 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 sea Vixen threads that somebody started. Somebody clicked it right away and bought it. They got it for about $130 and I got another $20 credit. So essentially it was $130, $135, dollars something like that, which is a really quite a bargain for uh, a really nice 70 millimeter EDF jet that, uh, that has the fan installed, the motor installed, the speed controller installed, and retractable landing gear and has all this uh, nice detail to it. Um, overall really impressed with the, with the whole package. Um, Three things that I'd like to see on this, and hopefully they'll be carrying this and maybe even improve it later. But a few things I'd like to see is I'd like to see working rudders. The plane is actually big enough that they could easily put uh, working rudders in here with two servos in here. Um, there's a tremendous lead weight in here to counterbalance the battery that they had to put up front. So it'd be nice to see two servos in there wired in so we have some rudder control. Uh, and get rid of some of the tail weight and I think it would be phenomenal. In fact, I may do a future video on putting uh, rudder servos in there because it would be pretty easy to do. The other thing I'd like to see is, uh, is uh, gear doors on this thing. Um, similar to some of the unique models, uh, airplanes that have opening and closing doors like their T-50 Jet and their uh, um, uh, T-6 Texan II or their Pilatus PC-9. Um, those planes fly great because they have closing doors and it cleans up a lot of the drag. And this airplane certainly is big enough to have uh, uh, some doors that close on them, and I think that would actually give this plane a little more, uh, a little more top end speed just by cleaning them up with doors. And thirdly, one thing I'd like to see almost is actually a, a larger version of this plane. It's such a cool airplane. I think it'd be a real nice platform for either a 90 millimeter version 
or even a twin 70 that would really really be cool for this airplane um, anyway that's all my wish list for hobby king so if you're watching this uh, uh, I think that would be a way to go with this it's just such a unique airplane and it's just very cool looking and the detail is tremendous it builds and flies well um, about the only um, maybe downside to it that some people may run into is the nose wheel is very small um, and as long as you have decent grass and you saw from the video I'm flying the plane solely off of grass ours is uh, is uh, rolled a few times a week with a roller so it keeps it nice and flat it takes off well on the grass I'm flying up but if you have tall grass you may have a problem getting off the ground uh, with such small wheels on this airplane especially the nose wheel so that's just something to consider if you're thinking about getting one um, the parts on this airplane fit very well uh, and, uh, I, I, and it builds nicely but there were a couple caveats that I found as I built it there were a couple improvements couple upgrades things I think that will uh, uh, um, uh, increase the longevity of the airplane uh, and, uh, and also I, I put in there some arrangement of the battery compartment because the battery compartment is a little bit tight and you just have to keep, be careful where you put things um, and, uh, and if you follow the guide you, you, uh, it'll give you a couple ideas and some good suggestions uh, the following video you're about to see will take you step by step through just opening up the box you'll get to see all the parts uh, I'll give you my, my take on everything and what I think of, of everything in there. Um, and then I'm going to go into sort of a building guide. The instructions will get you through most of the building. The pictures are easy to follow, but the reading is a little tough. But the pictures get you through it because they're nice color and the CG in there works real well. Um, but, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, lay out um, uh, some of the things that uh, I have changed, improved, and upgraded that I think are really going to make the plane uh, even better than it is. Anyway, guys, without further delay, let's get on with the build guide. Starting off the review of the Hobby King Sea Vixen, got a look uh, here at the outside of the box, and uh, mostly I'm showing you this one in this case is to show you some of the damage. This one had a hole in it here, and a hole in it here, and you can see here, reject if damaged. So uh, there's also a hole on the back side, and, and the reason it's already opened is because uh, I actually uh, was able to intercept uh, the mailman uh, as he brought it by the house, and he had time for me to open it up and make sure that... Uh, that uh, everything was in there. Uh, I was mostly afraid that something might have slipped out and uh, and uh, what I wanted to try and avoid though was shipping it back because when you reject it sometimes it uh, it just takes forever for this thing to get back to Hobby King and and so forth. So um, you know that being said uh, I did open it up I was able to check out everything that was inside and make sure everything was there and although there was some damage to the box like I said right here on the back side and right here and so forth uh, everything was in there okay. Uh, you know, the, uh, the Sea Vixen box, I'll open this up right here. Uh, it got a little bit damaged, uh, but it, it seems to take in the abuse. We'll open it up, and uh, I will show you uh, what's inside there and so forth. Um, uh, but uh, there were, was a lot better packaging up here that I already took out and I actually had to get rid of because I ordered a few more things from them. Uh, but you can see that the, the, the Vixen, Sea Vixen box dinged up, is dinged up a little bit. But uh, overall, it pretty much survived. So uh, anyway, let's uh, get it out of this box and take a closer look. Here's a quick look at the uh, Durafly or the Hobby King Sea Vixen box. You can see it uh, got kind of hit here. Uh, it is a nice, colorful box. They, uh, they're doing a real nice job, it looks like, so far with their boxing and packaging. Again, you can see where it got hit there. Over on this side, it got a hole uh, kind of right in here. So, uh, you know, you guys are going to see firsthand with me uh, you know, when we open this up and see uh, how well the, uh, the box uh, really uh, took care of this thing. You can also see the outer packaging here. There's a big hole on the underside and a big hole right here. So uh, uh, they did a good job packaging it. It looks like it just got a little beat up on the way here. But, you know, hey, that's what the boxes and the packaging are for. Uh, now let's take a look and see if the uh, Durafly box uh, protected the model inside. As we open up the box here, uh, we'll take a look at uh, how everything's packaged in here. Again, with the box damage uh, considered, uh, this is pretty much exactly how it showed up. Uh, looks like uh, they got some nice uh, instruction manual here. We'll get into that a little later and see how that looks. But, uh, you know, Hobby King's coming a long way with uh, a lot of their stuff. Nice instructions. Uh, looks like you got the two booms here. Uh, I'm not seeing any dinging or any damage or anything to those. Uh, and then, let's see, it looks like this is the... Uh, horizontal stabilizer in the elevator uh, that they got uh, already with a servo installed. Wow, it seems really heavy. I did hear there was some tail weight, so there's probably some lead weight it seems like in here. Uh, but anyway, it looks like a nice part. Uh, we'll go ahead and open up this section and see what we got here. They have multiple layers uh, to box all this stuff together. 
Uh, this looks like the uh, cockpit, and this looks like the canopy area where the cockpit uh, glues to. You got your two wings with your retracts installed and everything, and servos installed. And then the final layer down here is the fuselage, bombs, missiles, uh, and so forth. So uh, it looks like a box of hardware. So anyway, let me get this all out of the box, lay it out, and give you a much closer look at everything. Here's the layout of all the parts that came out of the C Vixen box, and everything was in really nice shape. The two outer boxes did their job and protected everything well, with the exception of a few scuffs here and there that most foam models have. Uh, everything was in, uh, in outstanding uh, condition. Yeah, you get the two wings with uh, retracts installed, an aileron servo installed, both wings. Uh, the horizontal stabilizer with a bunch of lead weight in it and elevator servos pre-installed. The fuselage comes with the fan, motor, ESC, and uh, nose retract installed on the underside. You also get uh, some dummy ordnance like these uh, two rocky po rocket pods, uh, the tail cone that actually glues on the back, these two external uh, which look like drop tanks, uh, two missiles, and uh, these two booms that actually uh, connect the uh, or attach the wings to the uh, horizontal stabilizer. Over here there's a bag of uh, miscellaneous parts such as uh, two little uh, fins that go on the underside, ventral fins, uh, some uh, pedo tubes and other probes that stick out of the wing, and uh, screws and, and linkages, um, uh, clevises, horns, and rods. Uh, overall, real nice package here, guys. Now, let me show you some of the individual parts and show you some of the features that they have. Starting off with the fuselage, guys. This thing uh, came in real, uh, real nice shape overall. Uh, real cool detail, very nice colors, and uh, uh, quality looks uh, pretty decent. Uh, a lot of decals right on the top here with these uh, red markings. Probably these were service panels to get into the engines on the real airplane, uh, just because the, you know, the, the engines buried so deep in the fuselage, they probably uh, needed a lot of access uh, to them. Uh, you can see in here the intake that goes uh, into the uh, fan unit. Uh, flip this thing over. There's obviously an access panel here to get into the fan. Uh, a couple of cheater holes down here to help uh, help the uh, fan. Uh, get some more uh, air in there and uh, the retract unit in here which uh, they put the steering mechanism it's nice there's a nice metal steering arm in here a lander style strut uh, that has a uh, metal trunnion in it and uh, it looks like an aluminum uh, strut here as well uh, the steering is provided by um, uh, a metal uh, push-pull mechanism which is uh, uh, looks really nice so uh, we'll take a look at that closer uh, as we uh, as we get into it you can see down the tailpipes, you can see the motor in there, it's an outrunner motor uh, to power this thing. Uh, the canopy uh, comes in two parts, it's actually two separate pieces, and uh, they come off with uh, magnets. Actually these two pieces will eventually glue together, but you can see inside here, uh, they have a nice wood tray in there, and you can see the, uh, the servo uh, lines coming up, one for the retract and one for the steering servo. Uh, they finally, I'm really happy with the way that they actually put a uh, real nice um, battery strap in here and wrapped it around something so you can do whatever you want with this airplane, fly it upside down, yank on it hard, do whatever you want with it, and uh, the battery's not coming out of there. So, uh, you know, A-plus on the battery strap. And uh, rare earth magnet here to hold the uh, canopy into place. And uh, here's the uh, motor wires or the wires that come off the, uh, the speed controller to uh, plug in. Uh, and it uh, looks like they included a separate BEC, which was really nice, good idea. Uh, I probably will end up changing out this connector because I just like to use the red bullets and most of my batteries uh, have them on there as well. But if you're using the yellow ones, uh, it's already on here. Anyway guys, uh, real nice uh, fuselage job they did on the fuselage. It looks like there's some plug-ins here where the wings will plug right in. And uh, overall, uh, real happy with, uh, with the quality of the fuselage. Here's a look at uh, one of the main wings and uh, I actually did a little test fitting already. and. Uh, uh, the booms really plug in here real nice and fit into, into position uh, very precisely. Also the wings, I did a little bit of test fitting and inserted them into the, the plugs I just showed you on the fuselage. And uh, they fitted really, really snugly. Uh, I already began installing some of the linkages and that will probably be some of the, the next uh, part that I, that I show you. But uh, you can see here the servos or uh, servo for the ailerons are already installed. You have foam hinges all the way around for ailerons and elevator. Uh, no rudder control on this airplane. It's probably something that uh, could be added later. Uh, and a nice la RC lander uh, retract unit, uh, which is nice with a metal trunnion and a, uh, a metal strut, uh, or at least a, uh, 
uh, a metal uh, simulated strut. It's, it's, it's actually is aluminum, but it looks like it fits over the three millimeter rod. And, uh, and they, it looks like they are starting to make a, um, a doubler here for the landing gear uh, to give it a little bit uh, more support. But the overall quality and, and finish of the wing uh, is uh, really, really nice. Here's the horizontal stabilizer that uh, comes all assembled and it's all, all in one piece, uh, foam hinge and everything as the ailerons are on the underside. You have a, uh, a servo already installed. I went ahead and I put the linkage on already and the screws and everything and I'll talk about that uh, in the next uh, coming shots here. But uh, there's a really heavy spar and the combination weight in here that uh, makes this really rigid and also it's really heavy. So uh, obviously the real airplane normally has heavy engines right back here, but it's very light here because there's just a lightweight fan unit and all the weight is up front with the battery. So they need a little extra obviously tail weight to keep this thing in balance. And we'll check that out as we go on uh, further. But anyway, uh, real nice quality uh, of this elevator. Here's a look at one of the uh, booms that goes uh, from the wing to the tail. They did a nice job with the uh, decals, very scale, uh, very realistic uh, looking uh, paint job. Uh, this is the one that's uh, for the right side of the airplane. You can see here they put a channel running all the way through here uh, that goes up to the elevator to hook up to the elevator servo. So that's the one wire you're going to have running back there. I already did a test fitting of these. These plug in really nicely uh, into the top uh, wing sockets, as you can see right there and uh, make for a really, really nice fit. But uh, uh, A plus on these, definitely a real nice quality. One real nice feature included with this airplane is the ordnance package. It's very colorful and it's uh, very contrasty uh, on this airplane. It really looks, uh, looks pretty darn good on there. Um, this plastic piece for this rocket pod uh, is a little heavy and so forth, but uh, it really, really looks cool. I generally don't put ordnance on my plane just because I like to get all the speed and performance I can out of the airplane and more flight time. Uh, when you add these on, they really look good, but they do add some drag uh, and some weight. So you usually have to carry a little more power when you're uh, uh, flying around with these on there. But uh, for those of you who like scale detail, uh, these are, uh, are really, really nice looking on the airplane. Another nice feature of this plane is the, uh, the uh, sort of the accessories and the details that they give you. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, I don't know, pitot tubes and uh, probes and so forth that uh, stick out of the front of this airplane that are very nicely painted, uh, they're very colorful, and uh, will really, uh, really stand out and look good on this airplane. Uh, you can see here there's these, uh, this will give you a little bit of Velcro too, probably for the receiver, uh, but there's these little uh, scale uh, uh, ventral fins that go on the underside of the airplane. Uh, there's also uh, another nice thing is these stall fences that you actually go ahead and glue onto the wings. There's a nice uh, form-fitting notch that I already tried out and they fit real nice on there. So lots of scale details uh, in this package, guys, that uh, really make this airplane uh, look uh, fantastic. Last but not least, they provided this really nice uh, instruction manual for you. Everything is uh, nicely uh, photographed in color, and uh, it looks like they get you through the majority of the, the building with uh, some real nice pictures. Uh, as I get to the building process, if there's any caveats to this, I'll point it out. Uh, but uh, at first glance, looking through this, it looks like there it's... Uh, pretty, pretty complete. Uh, on this page here, they provided you with a uh, real nice picture of the uh, uh, center of gravity, 490 millimeters uh, uh, aft of the nose. So uh, real easy to, to find that spot. And as I get to the flying part, uh, uh, we'll check this out and make sure it works out well for you. Uh, anyway, guys, as usual, uh, as I uh, get through the building process of this thing, uh, I'll, if, I, if I come up with any changes, uh, upgrades or improvements or things I think uh, we can do better on the airplane, make it uh, safer and fly better. Uh, I'll be sure to point them out in this build guide. To start off the building process on my airplane, I went ahead and installed the horns, clevises, and linkage rods first. It's just easier to do this than to try and do that after the airplane is uh, already put together. So, uh, you know, you take care of the uh, wing surfaces uh, and take care of your, uh, your uh, elevator. So there's uh, actually three uh, linkages that you have to put on. Uh, they only provide you though with six screws, okay, so two diagonally on here is really the bare minimum you need to put on there. I have extra screw, screws laying around and I really don't like using just two screws for a flight control surface. So uh, I put four on there, as you can see from the flip side here, uh, I put the flush side uh, on the top so it just kind of makes for a little bit of a, a cleaner install. Uh, the only real uh, work that you have to do to this thing uh, is uh, the hole in the, in the horn the servo horn is a little bit small, so either a small drill bit through here or what I did is just used a, uh, uh, 
an X-Acto knife or hobby knife and just kind of rotate it around in there, make the hole a little bigger, wind it up a little bit, and then you can pull and put your Z-banded rod in there. Uh, don't make it too big because you don't want too much play in there, so you want it to be actually pretty snug in there. And uh, last but not least, to add some security to keep your clevis on, uh, it's a good idea to just put a little piece of fuel tubing right around here after you have your clevis on uh, to keep it from coming off in flight. The first major part of the assembly is uh, attaching the wing. It's also really the most important, the most critical one. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use epoxy to put this uh, this thing on. You want to very care very lightly just scuff the surfaces. Don't don't dig too deep into it because the wing is a good fit, and you don't really want to affect uh, the fit of the wing. But using a sanding bar, you can really lightly uh, scuff this thing down. Uh, one nice thing they did at the factory is they did not glob a whole bunch of paint on here that you have to try and get off. It's you can see there's almost like a light dusting on here, so the sanding bar will or take that off uh, nicely. 30-minute uh, epoxy is uh, definitely the way to go. It gives you plenty of time to work on such a big surface like this. Um, when you apply the epoxy like I'm going to do, I'm just going to you know, go ahead and brush, mix 30-minute epoxy and brush it on and put it all, all throughout here. Um, one, uh, one tip I have for this section here is uh, you know, as you put epoxy on here and on the wing and so forth, uh, when you go ahead to insert the wing, uh, it can cause, uh, by using epoxy here, it can cause a bubble of air to form in here and uh, the wing may not seat all the way down. So to alleviate that, if you just take yourself a small drill bit and just sort of put a hole in here, kind of go into the wheel well a little bit. I put two holes in here. You can do as, you know, maybe just a few in there. Uh, and, uh, and then for the forward hole, I went ahead and I put a little hole here where this is, this is the channel for the, uh, for the uh, gear and the aileron wire. And that goes into that compartment as well. Uh, that way what will happen is, is uh, when you brush on your, all your epoxy, and you go ahead and you insert your wing in here, uh, you won't get a bubble in there. And if there is a bubble of air in there, instead of uh, you know, pushing it on and having this thing push back on you, as you push it in, glue and air will actually come out of uh, these two holes on the bottom. So you'll probably have glue and air come out of there and glue and air come out of there. But then the wing will seat nicely. So uh, that's probably the best way to do it. And then, of course, any glue that, uh, or epoxy that may ooze out of this channel, uh, you can just clean it up with alcohol. And, uh, and, and let the thing dry. Uh, another comment, another suggestion I want to make on this thing too is, is uh, trying to plug the landing gear uh, into this, or trying to get the wing to mount with the landing gear attached uh, was kind of a pain just even dry fitting it. So I just took the four screws out and tucked the wire in here with a little piece of foam just to shove it in there. And uh, I think it's going to be much, much easier to uh, glue this whole wing on without having to really screw around uh, with the landing gear. But anyway guys, 30 minute epoxy is the way to go on this. Scuff both surfaces, brush it on, uh, give yourself some vent holes, and uh, you'll definitely have a real uh, nice bond on this wing. When gluing on the wings, I found the easiest way to glue the first wing on was to uh, literally just put the fuselage on the table as you see it here, and apply your glue onto the fuselage first, then put it onto the wing, and then just go ahead and just put your wing right on. Uh, this, this makes for a perfect stand to glue this thing on. And now in, in the position it's in now, you can just clean the epoxy off, uh, use alcohol if you need to to get extra epoxy off, and just let it sit here and dry. When gluing the second wing, it's not too much different than uh, the first. Uh, you just have to find something that you can uh, suspend the fuselage uh, between. Uh, I usually use tables or something like this, so just as a suggestion, if you can find some boxes or tables or something like this with some foam so you don't damage you know, the front fuselage and the, uh, and the uh, tail cone area there, uh, if you can suspend it like this, the, the second wing glues just as easy as, as the first one. You just apply the, the glue to the fuselage first, uh, then to the wing, and then just put it together. Clean it off with alcohol and, uh, and then just let it dry like this and you'll have a nice nice wing bond. When attaching the booms to the wings, you can either use epoxy or contact cement. Uh, I just went ahead and used contact cement, which is kind of funny because uh, this is one of the few kits that they actually don't supply you with a tube of it. Uh, and I don't use it too, too much, uh, except for usually non-structural items. But there was so much surface area to glue in these together, and they were such a tight fit that, uh, that uh, it really just needed to be sort of tacked. Uh, or glued in with something that's tacky. So, but either way, uh, you know, you want to uh, sand lightly, sand the contact surfaces, and just get scuff them up a little bit, and then apply whatever glue you like, and uh, just secure them in position. 
Here's a few suggestions I have for installing the elevator. I did notice that this uh, pre-installed wire in this channel was actually sticking up above the surface a little bit, so I just kind of pulled it out of there and uh, taken a hobby knife, uh, and I'll do it right here. I went ahead and I cut right along this edge. I cut down deep, maybe another two or three millimeters or so, and then you just kind of very, very carefully take your knife and just kind of pop it out of place there. And what you're going to have is a, a little slightly deeper trench so your wire will, will countersink all the way down in there. And then uh, prior to installing this, uh, probably epoxy is the way to go um, just because it's a really heavy surface and there's probably going to be a, quite a bit of load on this thing. So uh, you want to just carefully scuff everything down uh, and uh, just get the paint off it and so forth. Uh, then, uh, as you can see here on the, uh, on the rudder itself, same thing. You just want to scuff those surfaces lightly. Uh, so the epoxy has something to uh, bond to. Uh, I used uh, just a piece of wood here uh, with a little bit of sticky back sandpaper on it so I could get, um, as you can see, right inside that trench uh, to clean it out. And again, uh, once you make it gritty like that, uh, the epoxy will have something uh, better to bond to. Here's a quick tip for securing the nose gear wires. These nose gear metal wires are really nice. came supplied and already rigged just the way you see them uh, from the factory. Uh, but what would happen is, is when I would extend the gear, or I'm sorry, retract the gear into the well, these wires would wind up and get all twisted and sometimes they'd catch around this wheel collar and, and so forth. Uh, take a look at what they do right now. You See how they tuck under the wheel nicely and they don't really get tangled into anything? Now that's not perfect, it's not going to do that necessarily all the time, but here is how I was able to achieve that. Uh, what I did was, is I took the wires the way you see them initially and I tucked them under the wheel how you see them. Uh, then uh, I went ahead and you can see here how the wires uh, go down into the wheel well, okay, just the way we want them to go. What I did was I took contact cement, you can see it's a little messy here, but I globbed some right on here and right on here and just globbed it so uh, it would keep the wires in place. Then I just left this entire thing just the way you see it for hours, just let it dry like this. And what happens is, is the glue sort of has a uh, a memory to it and it's a rubbery uh, type material so when I extend the gear okay the wires extend to their full position and when I retract them the, the rubbery contact cement has a little bit of a memory to it and it pushes the wires back down in let's take a look at that again so just putting a little contact cement on the end of these things with the wires underneath the wheel will help them achieve a memory and it'll remember, they'll remember to go and it'll, 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 it'll sort of push them down into the wheel well where you want them to go. Instead of using contact cement uh, to draw the wire, these wire, the steering wires down, or if you just don't have any contact cement, you can also use a bungee or a rubber band of some kind. And you can see down here, this is actually like a little hair bungee, but a hair bungee or a rubber band, whatever you have, you can wrap it around this uh, little center piece of wood and then bring it up here, you go ahead and unscrew uh, the screw for the servo horn and then just kind of insert it through here, okay, through the loop and then just reconnect it on here uh, with the screw. Then you can see as you retract the landing gear, that bungee will draw the wires back down in and keep them from uh, getting tangled. And as you can see, it works pretty good and you still have steering through the entire uh, process. With the major components of the airplane assembled, now is probably the best time to go ahead and put on the refueling probes and the pitot tubes and all these little uh, um, uh, ventral fins and the little stall fences and so forth. Uh, I reversed that from the order of the instructions. The instructions have, have you um, glue all of these pieces on first and then it would be a real pain to actually glue the wings on without tearing all this stuff off the airplane. So uh, just like with the landing gear, you can see here, uh, I took the landing gear, as we talked before, I took the landing gear out before I glued this uh, whole thing together. And you can see the glue joint for the wing uh, runs right through the landing gear well. Uh, I know for sure as I was epoxying this, I would have got glue all over that wheel and that strut. It would have been a pain in the neck. So uh, again, once you have this whole thing together, the wings, the two booms, and the elevator, it's all dry just the way you see it. Now is the best time that you can uh, safely put the retracts back in, run the wires, uh, put all your, uh, your uh, you know, pitot tubes and probes and things on it, stall fences, and, uh, and the model will pretty much uh, mostly be finished. And there's much less chance of you uh, tearing all those uh, little details off the airplane. Here's a look at the underside of the airplane with uh, all the landing gear reinstalled and all the wires run. If you look all the way to the back of the airplane here, you can see uh, the elevator servo 
direct wire actually runs along this channel here, which I actually taped over with some light white electrical tape to make it disappear. And then the wire continues in a channel that runs all the way along here, uh, or along the blue part of the paint still. And then it joins up here where I had to, she actually had to carve away a little bit of the foam to get it to recess in there. And then uh, the wire continues to run along this channel. It goes underneath the landing gear here, all the way uh, to the floor of the wheel well. And then it runs along a channel here, which again I taped over. At this point here, it joins up with your aileron and your landing gear um, wire. And again, they, and that runs along right along here where I taped over. Again, it joins up right here. And then all that runs into this channel, all those wires uh, into this hole. This side is almost identical with the exception of uh, the elevator wire, which comes in from the other side. But basically your aileron uh, wire, your landing gear wire, run through this channel, which again, you can see I taped over. And it also goes uh, right through this hole. Now, uh, you can see it's real clean when you tape over these uh, channels uh, and, and to, to kind of protect the wires and so forth. You can glue the wires in position with some contact cement if you want to, but it's usually cleaner with tape. If you don't have white electrical tape, uh, you can actually use uh, scotch or something like that. If you have an airbrush, you can even airbrush over the scotch tape and it, uh, with white paint, it really looks clean. Anyway, these two holes right here and right here that are taped over is where uh, the wires enter into the uh, battery compartment. Now let's flip the airplane over. We'll take a look at where those wires uh, come in to the battery compartment. With the airplane flipped over, you can see the uh, battery compartment, how I have everything uh, laid out. Uh, as I zoom in here, uh, as we just looked at the underside, you could see the uh, holes where the wires came through. And you could see all the way down there at the bottom through that lightning hole in the wood, you could see wires coming through there. Those are for the uh, retracts. And over on the other side, uh, you can see uh, the hole way down in there where the elevator wire actually comes in uh, with the retract and uh, aileron channel as well. So, uh, and you can see uh, how they are all tie wrapped into place. And you can see that this tie wrap right here uh, came already installed on the plane, actually, and it was just ready to run these wires. Same on this side. This tie wrap was also installed like this as well. Um, and as we look at the speed controller, which is right in front of the fan, there you can see it's way up on the upper left-hand side there. It's right in front of the fan. Uh, the power wires for that also come down here. So those tie wraps are really critical that they already install there and those uh, laser cut holes where the tie wraps go through are really meant to hold all those wires in place. And it's real critical because right behind everything, again, there's the fan. So if you don't secure all this stuff down, um, this fan could potentially suck wires in there and queeze and all your wires and then there goes your airplane. So uh, you, gotta, you gotta take note that the fan is uh, literally uh, right behind the ESC and all the wiring here in the battery compartment. So as long as they secure everything, uh, it won't be a problem, but just take note that those two tie wraps that they install and provide there uh, in those lightning, those uh, two little holes that they laser cut are really, really critical. So uh, make sure you tie everything down tightly. As we take another look down in the battery compartment here at the wires that run on this side and the wires that run on this side, it's important to note that uh, when the wires come in through the hole in the bottom of the fuselage down here, I, don't, I didn't take these wires and run them up this side and these wires and run them up this side. I actually crisscrossed them in the middle. As you look down, you can see there's a little crisscross right through this hole. Um, the reason for that is, is if you take the wires from this side, run them up here, the wires from this side through the foam and run them up here, you're gonna have to Y harness them through here. And here's where the battery's gonna go. So you're gonna have all these Y harnesses and everything here and it's gonna be a big mess of wires. So, what I did was is I took the landing gear from this side and the landing gear wire from this side and I decided to run them through this channel and tie wrap, wrap them down. Um, on this side I took the aileron wire from this side and this side and I ran the aileron wires up this side. That way I could Y harness the ailerons here, Y harness the landing gear on this side and leave the whole center free uh, to put the battery down. As we look at the uh, right side wall of the battery compartment you can see how everything's arranged in here. Uh, again, right over here with this tie wrap that they provided and put in position already for you, I secured my power wire, my two aileron wires, and my elevator wire. And again, you want those to be pretty tight and secure because the fan is right there and you do not want the fan uh, to suck those in for obvious reasons. Uh, right along here, your aileron wires run along this wall and connect with a Y harness. And then this Y harness just goes right into the receiver. 
I attach these with double-sided scotch tape, okay, to the sidewall, and they stay on there real nicely. If you need to get them off, you still can. BEC, I just, as you can see here, I just Velcroed it to the wall, and that fits nicely. You can also see here, I changed my connector because all my batteries use these red ones, and uh, I added an extension. They only gave you about an inch and a half of wire from your BEC, and I needed these to get the battery in, and I'll show you that here in the next couple of clips why I had to add a little bit of wire on there. And as you can see here, receiver, any receiver that you have, is uh, uh, easily Velcroed uh, to the floor of the, uh, of the battery compartment. Now as we take a look at the left inside wall here of the uh, battery compartment, again starting at the back here with the tie wrap that they already supplied and, uh, and uh, installed for you here to secure these, uh, these wires. I have my two retract wires secured there. They come up here where they join with the third wire here that comes from the uh, nose gear retract. They plug into this triple Y harness that they supplied and these three connectors I simply uh, took uh, double-sided scotch tape again and secured them to the sidewall and that leaves the center area free here for the battery. These, this triple Y harness just simply plugs right into channel 5 here uh, for your retract switch on your radio. Now as we look inside the battery compartment on the flip side, you can see the wheel, wheel the nose gear wheel down in here, the cables, and you can see the bungee cord here that's attached uh, inside the battery compartment. And uh, as I zoom out, you can see the battery is going to uh, kind of sit right there. Uh, it may cover over here just a little bit or it may just stop short here, but uh, this area I'm just going to cover over with um, a shelf liner uh, to keep the battery uh, sliding around. But anyway, this is what it looks like and this is how the bungee will, will look from the inside. As we look back into the battery compartment, I wanted to point out one more safety device that I built into the airplane. What we're looking at here is, uh, as we looked at before, was this uh, battery backstop that uh, is supposed to help uh, keep the battery from going too far back because you can see right behind it is the fan. Uh, well, the problem I found with this thing is, is that uh, if you should one day just push your battery back in there and break this glue joint right here and you're flying along, guess where this piece of wood is going? It's going right into your fan that's all the way back there. So that will probably cause a catastrophic failure of the fan and probably would destroy the airplane. So what I did to sort of prevent that is, is I took a bead of, uh, of uh, CA and uh, first of all I ran it across this joint and secondly I put a tie wrap here. Okay, now I drilled a hole, you can see the hole down through the bottom there uh, and if you flip the airplane over you can drill a hole through this plywood through the cheater hole real easily and then uh, using some uh, creative uh, plier work you can go ahead and you can put this tie wrap in here and that tie wrap is there just for one reason and that is, is just in case this piece of wood breaks off uh, it'll at least hang on to that piece of wood so the wood doesn't go into the fan. Your battery should be held in place by the Velcro, the strap, uh, and the, or, the, or whatever you have there. I use uh, 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 the shelf liner stuff to keep the battery from sliding. But, but again, if your battery breaks this thing off, it's going right into the fan unless you have something like this tie wrap to secure it. Here's a look inside the battery compartment with uh, all the wires run, everything's installed, all the mods and upgrades are completed. I went ahead and put some double-sided scotch tape on the uh, floor of the battery compartment and then ran some of this uh, shelf liner stuff on the bottom. That plus the battery strap will uh, keep the battery from shifting around forward or back or up or down. They do include with the kit uh, a nice sized piece of Velcro that you can secure your battery with. If you prefer to use this, go ahead and use it. It's, the, it's a, definitely a good way to go. Uh, I've just found that with uh, uh, my batteries, if I put a piece of Velcro on it and fit it in one battery, uh, uh, fit it in one airplane, then it won't fit in another airplane. I've got to take the Velcro off. So uh, I don't have any Velcro on my batteries. I just use a shelf liner and straps uh, to keep them all in place. And uh, the shelf liner will keep, it's nice and tacky and uh, we'll keep your battery from sliding around. Here's a final look inside the battery compartment with the uh, battery installed. I gotta give Durafly top marks for this battery strap and the way that they secured it down to an all wood floor. It's definitely the best strap and the best uh, the best installed strap that I've uh, seen in any airplane and I didn't have to modify it or anything. It, it, I'm pretty confident the battery's not gonna go anywhere in this airplane regardless of what I do with it. Uh, the battery you see here that's installed is a uh, Turnigy 4000 milliamp 30 to 40 C discharge. They recommend a 3300 pack, but uh, this is only slightly heavier, and uh, I use this uh, battery in a lot of other airplanes. Um, one of the reasons I did run uh, the uh, 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 BEC and all the connectors along both sides here, 
and ran the way, wires the way I did through uh, that I showed you earlier was because if I did not have all these Y harnesses here and I wouldn't have any room to shift this battery forward because if I use a lighter battery the next time I fly I may need to shift this forward a little bit, the battery forward, uh, to get the uh, CG correct. Now, the way I installed this battery in here, um, I left the length of the wire on here on the, on the ESC and just sort of tuck these in the side, as you can see here, and then just sort of push them down uh, into place here along the side. And then uh, once they're in there, uh, you'll find that the uh, battery hatch uh, will fit uh, really nicely in place. And all you need to do is just stick that in and drop it in place. Uh, the battery hatch is, um, the cockpit, is uh, very shallow and very light and they give you a lot of room so there's nothing real deep sticking down in there but uh, tongue and groove on the front and a magnet in the back and your cockpit is secure. Here's a really sweet detail guys that I uh, added to my airplane and uh, I had this pilot laying around uh, and I never really used him for anything but he fits in here really nicely. This is uh, Hobby King's uh, F one of their F-14 pilots, uh, one of the taller ones that's got shoulders on it and uh, to put this in here, guys, it's kind of a no-brainer. You just sort of push his right shoulder up against here, make an indentation in the foam, take your uh, hobby knife and just carve a, a little slot out there. And then probably what I'll do down here on the bottom is just glue a foam block or a block of wood down in there. And then you just sort of push his shoulder into that, that notch. And uh, just make sure you sort of line him up uh, uh, decently straight with the seat. Uh, make sure he lines up with the seat this way. And uh, then when you glue him down, you can then go ahead and glue your, uh, your canopy on. And uh, man, you get a really stellar uh, looking pilot in there. Here's a quick look at the foam block that I put in place uh, with some contact cement. And you can see how the pilot fits uh, nicely on top of there. As you can see here, after applying just a little bit of black magic marker, it pretty much uh, makes that foam block disappear. And then you can go ahead, take your contact cement, uh, glue your pilot down, and then go ahead and get your canopy in place. And again, you got a really nice uh, scale pilot in there. Here's a quick look at the uh, underside of the airplane. You can see the uh, retractable landing gear unit that uh, I actually painted white just to sort of match the, uh, the uh, outside of the airplane. And I think it really looks good getting rid of some of that black plastic looking color. Uh, you can see the strut is in real nice aluminum uh, kind of outer wrapping that goes around the three millimeter wire. Uh, as I move farther here into the center, you can see the uh, cheater holes on the underside. Uh, which help uh, the fan get more air in. Uh, and over towards the left side of the screen, you can see the uh, two screws that uh, uh, are for the access hatch for the fan unit. Uh, anyway, as I pan out here, you can see all three of the uh, landing gear struts. And uh, I thought I would show you how nicely that these things work. All right, and this is right out of the box, guys. I've already done a whole bunch of flying with this plane, like I said, and... Uh, uh, you can see the main wheels probably, the wheel wells probably have enough room for um, uh, even larger wheels if you want to sit, stick something uh, slightly larger on there. But uh, this is uh, right out of the box, works perfectly. You see the gear has a really nice stance to it. Let me go ahead and extend it. And uh, it's just great for, uh, for takeoffs and, and, and landings. And uh, it has just functioned and held up really well. Here's a look at my completed Sea Vixen. As you can see, it's a really cool looking airplane, guys. And as I indicated in the beginning, uh, this plane actually, as you see it now, I've already been flying it quite a bit and uh, actually had one crash with it uh, due to a, uh, due a bad radio. But, you know, it, it, is, uh, it is a Durafly model. It's made out of uh, EPO foam, so it's uh, real easy to repair and uh, an airbrush and uh, clean it up. Uh, but overall, guys, really good looking airplane, really nice detail to this, uh, this whole thing. All right, guys, that concludes this video on the uh, Durafly Sea Vixen from uh, Hobby King. Uh, overall, guys, uh, uh, it's, it's, you get a lot of bang for the buck with this. You get a lot of airplane for the money, for sure. Uh, it builds well. It looks fantastic. It flies nicely. And even at $150, you can't beat it. It's a he heck of a deal. And if you use that buddy code, like I told you in the beginning, um, at $130, $135, man, uh, it's, it's just a heck of an airplane. Um, one more thing I want to note about this plane is um, after probably about the third flight, um, third or fourth flight I'd say that we did on it for the video, um, we had some sort of a radio glitch and on the downwind the plane just rolled over <laughs> and went down into the weeds uh, 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 out beyond our fence line. And uh, the tail broke off, this wing broke off here. Um, but you know, it's a Durafly airplane guys. Uh, we had to shoot a few more video, a few more, uh, actually several more flights 
And um, as you can see, it, it almost looks unscathed. These EPO planes can take a heck of a beating and um, you can glue them all back together. Uh, as a side note, I did do uh, a airbrush video that will give you a little guidance. I use in my Hobby King airbrush. Um, I was able to really just kind of glue this thing back together, just tweak it a little bit, and uh, use the airbrush to clean it up. And uh, as you saw in the video, you, you can't even tell. And even looking at it now, if you look closely, I'm not sure if you can even see it. But, uh, but it's been broken up and repaired, and it still flies fantastic, and you can't even tell. So anyway, guys, uh, once again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching this uh, video. Uh, check out rcinformer.com for uh, more videos, RC Informer on YouTube. And uh, check us out on Facebook as well. Just type in RC Informer, you'll pull it up. And I'm on there a lot, so it really is a good place to... Um, to talk to me directly or if you have any problems with this airplane or any other airplanes or any questions you have it's a good place to you know fire me a, a, a picture from your cell phone or something if you're having trouble with anything you want me to look at something uh, anyway guys uh, hope to see you online once again thanks for watching and as always we will see you next time